There was a story out yesterday that uh, some conservatives are becoming concerned that they might lose the fight for charter schools, having pushed for school choice and school reform and charter schools. Uh, progressives, of course, come in to take over, and there is anxiety among conservatives that they keep winning institutions, creating new institutions, and then the left takes over, whether it's academia, the press, corporations, uh, education. It seems like nowhere is the right safe. Ironically, by people who mock snowflakes and safe spaces, conservatives are concerned about the progressive takeover now of charter schools and even private schools. I, you know, I got to tell you, our kids go to a school where you have to be interviewed about your faith. You have to have a faith commitment that is a, a Christian evangelical faith commitment to go to school. I'm thinking about the uh, couple yesterday I talked about on the radio that moved their kids to a charter school in Forest City, North Carolina, uh, gender fluid, gender non-binary. It's a char- classical education style charter school. Uh, they've moved in and now they they feel disrupted that the family does because the schools just in the school community, just really not down with a necromancer, witch, transgender with non-binary and gender fluid kids. It's just not quite fitting into this conservative community for city. Of course, the people in the community are vilified as the bad guys. Uh, and, you know, the, the parents are not there just kind of wackadoo. Uh, they got issues that they have poured out on their kids who now have issues. It's just there's not a jihad in the community, so to speak. That's Southern slang. But the larger issue is conservatives believing that as they get institutions and make gains, the left comes in. I, I want to say something about this, and it is a little bit relevant to my book. There is some in there, but I was I saw the story yesterday and the concerns, and I just want to say something to you. You know, uh, for those of you who are concerned about this thing, I'll tell you the usual pattern. The right thinks it's made a gain and then gets complacent, and the left is not complacent. Now, let's play this out. Let's talk about feeding the homeless. There are church groups that have for a long time fed the homeless, and surprisingly, well, not really, a lot of them tend to be uh, more progressive theologically. It is actually fairly rare in the United States to see, outside of the Catholic Church, I'm talking to evangelicals, it is somewhat rare to see a conservative evangelical church do a soup kitchen or a food bank. It tends to be more progressive theology-backed churches that do those sorts of things. Now, don't call the show and say, well, my evangelical, God-fearing, super conservative church does it. Your anecdote is not data. The data shows that evangelical conservative churches tend to spend more in the mission field, sending missionaries around the world, and the progressively theological churches tend to actually concentrate in their own backyard, feeding the homeless and things like that. And, of course, with it comes all sorts of other stuff, um, political agenda and the like. All of that is to say conservatives sometimes do a terrible job of the mission field in their own backyard, and oftentimes they'll help create, get the movement behind a charter school, and then wonder what the heck happened. Uh, I, I am I know a, a charter school near me where the you got the, the, the trans group, the gay group, uh, the, you got the potheads, and... Uh, lots of homework, and uh, a lot of conservative parents are thinking, wait, we thought we got our kids away from this, and here it is. So I want to talk about a friend of mine, and I'm going to leave out some of the details. This friend of mine is a minister. His kids go to public school. They go to a pretty good public school, but it's a public school, and it's in an urban area. And, you know, he's in charge of the talent show. And it's another Christian in charge of the PTA. And it's other Christians who are the library volunteers and get to help pick the books for the library. And it's other church people in evangelical conservative church groups who are involved in the athletic program and involved in the drama program, involved in the literary program, and involved in the 
prayer before school program and involved in the after school program and involved in the monitoring program. And they have made a commitment to do that. This is my my frustration with so many conservatives who get so worked up about so many of these things is you've abdicated your role and nature abhors a vacuum. And guess who's going to fill it? So let's take the worst case scenario. You go into your public school and you get all your friends whose kids also go to the school and you get all their parents who you know are believers, conservative, socially conservative, Christians, evangelicals, whatever. And you got a bunch of progressives in charge. Well, go join the boards and have some say. Because I bet you some of these progressive volunteers in charge of some of the programs have never had anybody object. And most people actually wish to find uh, peace. Most people wish to actually collaborate and not be hostile in groups. And so the progressive who's been doing the the drama department play on on some left-wing issue might say, okay, I I didn't realize there were people here who, who didn't feel comfortable going in that direction. And you might not be able to get them to do Passion of the Christ, but you might be able to get them to do some play that's not offensive to anybody. You can't sit on the sidelines, though. If you're worried about your institutions being captured, go be involved with them. Now, here's the thing. You're not always going to get your way. Sometimes you might lose. And the question then becomes, what do you do? I know people who take their football and go home. I encounter this on a regular basis. People who think, well, the progressives have taken over the group I belong to. And so I'm not going to go be a part of this group anymore because the progressives are in charge of it. And because the progressives are in charge, they clearly don't want me, so I will leave. Uh, forget the whole loving your neighbor stuff. This is a, I, if I can't get my way, I'm leaving. As opposed to, maybe you you disagree with some of the people, but maybe you can be a force for good and find some common ground. And is it really uh, an affront to you? Is it really offensive to you? Is it so offensive you can't be involved Or have you decided to be offended? Because there is a difference. Some people decide to be offended when it's not necessarily something to be offended over. They're just hypersensitive about it. But if you're worried about the intellectual capture of the institutions in which you're involved, well, be involved. And do it in numbers and bring in more people and get more people engaged who can stand with you and support you. And also, don't be a brain biblical donkey to the other side. You don't need to be a horse's behind to people whose propensity might be to be a horse's behind, but you can be the salt of the light. This whole worry notion among conservatives of intellectual capture and and, uh, institutional capture is growing and there it, it doesn't I don't think there's a coincidence that it also comes as there's a growing sense of victimization of people on the right people on the right used to believe that it was a choice to be a victim now there are bad things that happen to some people and they are victims but for a lot of people who perceive themselves to be victims there's actually nobody's done anything wrong to them they just have decided I'm a victim because I didn't get in my way, or they got their way, or things didn't go my way, or, or people have shifted in a different direction. That doesn't make you a victim. It just means maybe you lost an argument. But you can get involved and stay involved. And if you are a nice and reasonable person, people who might disagree with your politics might actually decide you know what you're talking about in this group because you've shown your commitment to it. Not in every case is it going to work. But in way more cases do I think people on the right realize it is. And education is one of those because if you're involved in a school, do you know how hard it is to get volunteers to show up at schools? Do you know how hard, how academics, administrators of schools, they would kill for all the parents to be involved. If you're regularly involved and you're helping and you're showing up early and you're staying late, they're going to rely on you to such an extent They're not going to want to make you mad and make you leave. It's a choice to decide to give up. 
frankly, I think a, a lot of conservatives also decided along the way, well, you know, it's the government's role now. That's what the left does. It's the government's role now. No, no, no. See, one of the reasons some conservative churches gave up doing food pantries and food banks and soup kitchens and stuff is, well, the government's doing that now. We, we can stop. We can focus on the missionaries abroad, things like that. They, they seeded uh, the welfare of their local community to Uncle Sam. And now they wonder why things have gone downhill. You can be the salt and light. You just can't abdicate in order to do so. It's a choice on your part to abdicate your responsibility to others. And it's a choice on your part to abandon the mission field to others because you feel aggrieved, put out, or on the losing side all the time. It's your choice. If you want to avoid intellectual and, and institutional capture by the left of the institutions that you have built, you have to stay engaged with them. You can't say, I, I built it. Now I'm going to go rest on my laurels. It is a constant. It's like tending a garden. If you're not there pulling the weeds at some point, the weeds are going to take over. It's a choice on your part. But the one thing you need to not do is insist that you are somehow the victim.